Greetings and salutatorians, as they said at the high school graduation. Jay Porter here. A couple of weeks ago, my daughter asked me if I could channel my inner hillbilly and do some cooking videos. So I said, okay, I can do that. And I figured, by the way, if Dylan Hollis, that Wyoming goat roper, can do cooking videos on TikTok and YouTube, so can I. So today, the quintessential gourmet food of West Virginia gatherings, the West Virginia chili coleslaw dog. Yep, I mean, places, other places may claim it. They do it a little bit in Ohio, a little bit in Kentucky, but this is a West Virginia holiday dish, and seeing that it is Labor Day today, I thought I would share this dish. Now, what is American cooking? American cooking is simple. American cooking is good. And no, that's not G-O-O-D good. That, that is G-U-D good. So I wanted to share today a very simple uh, recipe, something that's delicious, quick, and you'll be surprised at how it tastes. So let's get going. So first, your ingredients are most important in, in, in the individual part of this vehicle, this particular recipe are the hot dogs themselves. I always like something that's a choir quality uh, beef hot dog. These Nathans work quite well. Hebrew National does quite well, but you know, to be honest with you, they give me gas and they kind of sound like a digity do out in the outback when I'm eating them. The second thing, an onion. We'll need some diced onions. I have my Sarah Palin Moose and Paler knife here does a fine job along with the round uh, cutting board from Alaska. Next thing, mustard. We will be adding mustard at the end. Hot dog chili sauce. You will notice that this says chili sauce. Not chili. This is not some highfalutin recipe. The next thing, hot dog buns. Anybody from West Virginia that knows anything will tell you that white bread does an equally great job, but if you want to spend the extra dollar fifty and get yourself a package of hot dog buns, go for it. Tater chips. T-A-T-E-R. Remember that word. We'll be using it often on this channel. And finally, my wife made a KFC knockoff uh, coleslaw today. You want a wet coleslaw to go with this. You don't want some dry uh, coleslaw cooked in a vegan kitchen with someone with tofu issues. There you have it, the basic ingredients. So we're gonna move on to the preparation. Now, as you can see, this Sarah Palin Moose Impaler Dresser Knife in the rounded bottom does something very good. The onions of this are a very small but important part of this particular gourmet recipe. Uh, this is something that's not going to overwhelm your hot dog, but you're going to appreciate that it's there. Um, kind of like wearing your underwear during the day. Next in a saucepan, add your hot dog sauce. This may not have been a skill that you got with your gender studies degree, but trust me, it comes in handy in life being able to open a can of something that you've got in your pantry and heat it up very fast. This is kind of quintessential American cuisine. Now there is a lot of argument within the hot dog community as to which way to best prepare them. Some people think they should be steamed or boiled, some people believe that they should be fried in a skillet like we're doing here um, in a cast iron skillet with some real oil at the bottom. Uh, we want to get a little bit of burn on the skin. But here's the, the ultimate way to have a hot dog prepared is to have it outdoors. You'll have to find an alpha male with a buck knife who will take some sticks. They'll put a sharp end on them, a very sharp end. Your small children will then take their hot dog, impale it upon that spear, and then put it into a roaring fire. 
Uh, some of you mothers may have been triggered by this moment. I suggest that you take your children uh, to a tofu expo and, uh, if you have been triggered by this uh, past statement. Okay, we're gonna move on here and I'm gonna let this crisp up a little bit. Okay, our hot dogs have been cooking here for about two, three minutes. They've achieved a uh, Christmas on the outside shell. The hot dogification has permeated the hot dogs. We we'll turn them here a couple of more times just to make sure that they're fully cooked. We will turn them off for residual heat. But in the background here, all in this time, we have been having the hot dog sauce cook at a very low temperature. And it has been stewing around here. You occasionally want to stir it so that it does not burn. We're looking to have this all roll out about the same time. So hot dogs, I think, have went fur enough here. F-U-R, that's a new word. It's not just a mammal that you might uh, wear. So move on and we'll get to the next step. Seeing how y'all's guest today, I think I'm gonna go an extra step here. I do like steamed buns. I put them over top of the, put the hot dog buns over top of the hot dog sauce in the back, covering it with a paper towel. And we are just gonna let this slightly steam for a little bit. Uh, not a step I normally do, but like I say, you all are guests today. The hot dogs are still going through hot dog of vacation. Uh, the, the heat has been turned off, but you can see the sizzling is still permeating the hot dogs. And uh, very important in the hot dog of vacation process. Well, seeing how's y'all's company, we've decided to break out the good work, good dishes for this. This Fiesta Ware made in West Virginia, one of the last glass companies that are still alive in the state. There's always an argument, kind of like scones, whether you have the cream or the jelly first on your scone. Well, the question is, do you have your slaw or your, or your hot dog sauce first? Now, actually, I am a hot dog sauce first, slaw second person. So let's get some sauce. You apply it, don't over apply. You know, you're, 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 you're gonna have a lot, you're gonna wanna eat a lot of these so you don't have to bulk up on the first couple, couple of hot dogs. This is a, this is something you, this is kind of like a Olympic train thing. You've got to, you got to work up to this. Um, like I say, my wife made this KFC knockoff coleslaw today. Very wet, a wet coleslaw. I find that in the Western United States, um, that it's very difficult. Again, maybe a little too much there, but you know, I'll have to survive and work my way through it. Uh, again, we're gonna apply some slaw to the second hot dog. Cause like I say, this is not, this is not a one dog experience. You know, you kind of need to, you kind of need to enjoy a pack of these. And now remember our diced onions from the beginning of this? Well, very important thing. And we don't want to over onion fry, but we want, we want just a row. We kind of want a little soldier roll of these, and we're going to apply them to the edge of the hot dogs. Very important. This is a step uh, that you might miss if you're if you're not really trained in this kind of culinary excellence. Next thing, I'm really not a mustard person for hot dogs. However, with this particular combination. I want you to go on the opposite side of the mustard to the onions, go to the opposite side, take your particular hot dog, fold it. There you have the presentation. Let's fold it again. Like I say, we kind of overstuffed the first one. Uh, it's an issue you'll have to deal with. Um, all I can tell you is that this is delicious. Wait a minute, we've got a couple of more accoutrements to add to this particular dish. So finally, we've garnished our plate with some tater chips. Sorry, the finest potato chips available in the world, Mr. B. They take a long time to get to California and they are just a little stale. And you know what? 
what do you pair a fine culinary co concoction so, so this you can only pair it with one drink a tall glass of mountain dew with some ice for a hot hot summer uh labor day well this has been chef america i hope that you've enjoyed this i hope that you have a blessed day and i hope you try this you might be surprised and you might like it have a wonderful day bye